best a man can get. Back here, first things first, joined by head coach, former head coach Eric Mangini. Hey, coach. Good morning. How I both you? employed you, then unemployed you in like half a sentence there. Always the coach. Hey, yeah, Always. he's our coach. We call you him You are coach. our coach. It's great to have you here. Good morning. We'll start talking about something else. Now to the Rams. Let's talk about that. <laughs> it's been a uh, high-octane offensive show under head coach Sean McVay. In fact, in his first two seasons, no team has scored more points than the Rams. And only the Patriots have more wins. But what about that dreaded Super Bowl hangover after their loss to New England? Well, McVay's not hungover, says this is the best he's ever felt going into a season. Coach, you see the Rams making another Super Bowl run? It's going to be hard, and we talk about this all the time. The, the ability to deal with success is one component, and or failure is one component. The ability to deal with success is another component. And sometimes you get caught up with this expectation that where you finish is where you get to start. But the reality is it's so much different going into the next season. And there's been some turnover there. They've lost two guys on the offensive line. They lost both their center and, and, and a guard. And, and that continuity that they've had in the offensive line has been a big part of, of their offensive success. Then you lose a guy like Ndamukong and Sue, and there's two other starters on defense, uh, Mark Barron and, and LaMarcus Joyner. So there's five guys that were starters that played meaningful roles last year that they have to replace. So that also with the fact they've been one of the healthier teams over the last two years, which really is an aberration, and you can't count on that going into the season, it's going to be interesting to see how this group responds to adversity. And that was, that was a component we talked about with, with the characters that they have as part of the team. When it really mm -hmm. gets tough, yes. which they haven't faced, how is that group going to respond? So one thing that I found really interesting, Peter King talked to Sean McVay, and we, we're, we talked about what he learned from the Super Bowl preparing for this year. And McVay put so much of the onus on him. Talked about one particular play in the Super Bowl, the sixth play of the game, that Jared Goff, they had quarters beat. Quarters coverage was how the Patriots kind of surprised. I mean, playing a single high safety look for the most part of the year, they came out in quarters coverage, they had it beat, and Jared Goff didn't see it. And Jared Goff threw the ball away, and McVeigh puts that on him. I didn't communicate it to him. I didn't tell him to attack enough. I didn't tell him to look for this. And I understand that, and I appreciate that, and I think that's the right thing for a coach to do, taking, putting the onus on himself. But this season, a lot of this is going to come down to Jared Goff. Todd Gurley, we do not believe, is going to be, at the very least, as dynamic as he has been in years past. Also, Belichick exposed McVay's scheme, at least somewhat in the Super Bowl, to where other teams are going to try to take from that. So what can Jared Goff do if he doesn't have one of the two or three best running backs in football behind him for every snap or nearly every snap he takes. What can he do if Sean McVay all of a sudden goes from being giving you a enormous decided schematic edge to just a slight schematic edge? Can Jared Goff, the number one pick of the draft, going into year four, who is probably feels wait, the number two pick of the draft got a contract extension. He's never been to a playoff game. I was number one pick. I don't have an extension. I've been to the Super Bowl. What can he do and what can he do against the league's best defenses? Last year in five games against the, the Broncos, the Bears, the Eagles, and then playoffs, the Cowboys in New England, Jared Goff had zero touchdowns and seven interceptions. That's a red flag. Jared Goff's inability to adjust in the Super Bowl to me is a red flag. So I, I understand Sean McVay saying it's on me. It's on me. But that's got to be a partnership between McVeigh, the young star head coach, and the former number one pick of the draft, Jared Goff. Well, when they have success, we can't give him all the credit. And the failures in the Super Bowl, we can't give him all the blame. But he did realize early that he was taking the school. You should know, whatever coverage they had been playing, if I'm playing Bill Belichick, I come out of retirement, I'll tell you, give me the last four games of what their coverages are, and I'm going to flip it. They play 75%, cover one, cover two, I'm going to flip it. And whatever the coverages they play, eight, six, four, two, and whatever's at the bottom, I'm expecting that going into the game. I'm expecting them to adjust during the game, and I'm expecting them to make another adjustment at halftime. That's what Bill Belichick, that's what he's always done. Learn that from Parcells. So for me going in, what did you think they were going to do? Of course they were going to change their coverage. That's why Bill Belichick has been so dominant the last 20 years. To me, just one thing. Jared Goff, if he can improve on his play action pass compared to his regular dropbacks. Last year, led the NFL with 220 dropbacks with play action fake. Second in the league was Tom Brady at 184. But 
This is where the rubber meets the road. His passing rating in straight dropbacks is 20 points lower than it was with play action. Mm -hmm. So when he doesn't have play action, he is not as good of a quarterback. So it lets you know that Todd Gurley fake, that play action into the line of scrimmage, those linebackers being deceptive, a lot of his success has been Todd Gurley and the head coach. And I talked to Peter King last week, and he is looking for Jared Goff through Sean McVay's conversation to make a huge leap this season as they prepare. And, and he believes he'll improve in every area of the passing game, Coach. Yeah, may, maybe they don't watch the show, that, but they probably should have because we talked about it week in and week out about what <laughs> what they were going to do. And, it's and too it really, early on the West Coast. Well, it's not you know, fault. tape it because <laughs> you, you understood – what was going to happen when you go into the Super Bowl? They were going to take away your, your your best pitch, and they were going to force you to play left-handed. That That's not new. And, and Chris makes a, a really good point about drop-back passing. That's that's the, the component of, and, and we talk about this in meeting rooms all the time, if the other team knows you have to pass, and you know you have to pass, and everybody in the stadium knows you have to pass. Can you do it? Can you do it? And can the receivers run routes and get open? Mm -hmm. Can the quarterback get him the ball? Can the O-line hold up in protection? And that is the definition of, of the, or, or that's the difference between a lot of quarterbacks. There are a lot of quarterbacks that with play action, when you have that component, uh, and, and the decisions are easier and coverages are cleaner and, and there's a, a, an either or, they're pretty good. But when you're in that, that space, can you do it? And, and that's something he's got to prove. And he's got to prove that without two very important members of the offensive line who have given him continuity and stability. And he's got to prove that knowing we don't really know which Todd Gurley is going to show up. He had Todd Gurley to rely on, mm -hmm. and you don't know really which Todd Gurley. So between whatever the plan B is after the Patriots exposed their scheme last year, whatever their plan B is when they're not just throwing it down the field, and not knowing what you get in Todd Gurley, I think that's a big question well, for Well, and team. Coach, to circle back to what you started with about dealing with failures, one thing, dealing with success is another, I wonder how Jared Goff in individually views last season because obviously during the regular season it was enormous success during the playoffs it wasn't just the Super Bowl where Jared Goff struggled over the course of the playoffs as a whole he had 56 percent completions through one touchdown two picks and a 72 rating he had the one really I thought truly impressive drive on the road in New Orleans to get them in field goal range after the controversial non-call to force overtime. But aside from that, Jared Goff was not the force multiplier in that playoff run. And I think a lot of that did have to do, Jenna, with that Todd Gurley wasn't throughout that playoff run. The Todd Gurley who every defense had to stop first, second, and third on that team. And so when things weren't perfect, when Cooper Cup went out, mm -hmm. he was a different player. When Todd Gurley was not 100%, he was a different player. When Sean McVay isn't out coaching the other coach, he's a different player. This is, Jared Goff is, was not picked to be a game manager. He's picked to be one of your force multipliers. And that, to me, is what will determine if the Rams can get close to back to the level they were last year. Right, and you're not a force multiplier if you need another force multiplier to make you to be in that position. All right, uh, we'll take a break. Coach, stick around. Coming up, Zeke spoke, sort of. Will he be a cowboy for life? That's next on First Things First.